Well, that's not bad for height. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's call to order the December meeting of the Northampton Open Media Board of Directors. Uh, we will be, we have quorum now. We'll, we will hopefully be joined by Ellie in a few minutes. Um, but I don't see a reason why we can't jump into it. Uh, we were discussing uh, traveling, I guess. <laughs> that was kind of the loose topic. <laughs> How we should all go to Spain and hang out with Al. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, do you want to jump into um, talking about the date and time of the next meeting. Should we do that? Uh, yeah, I think that's a good, uh, like, the question is just, do we need to, how do we coordinate with the new board members? I assume we email them and let them know. Well, we can set a soft date and time for the meeting and then we'll email that's, them. That's the question, like, do we have to? Yeah, that's true. Do we do we check in like this? I think that, that Tuesday works has worked in the past quite well so that but just to make sure that they're on board as well um the second tuesday in january is the ninth so if you want to set a soft soft january meeting date for the ninth i think that'd be good when are you back El? i'm back on the 20 uh 29th so i'll be back for that for sure cool okay um let's look at the minutes we have two different meeting minutes to briefly look at we have our last regular meeting and then we had a special meeting so i'm gonna pull those up and uh screen share them i can find yeah they're not no that, that should be right isn't it yes yeah there we go <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, our last, well, our, our second, or two meetings ago, uh, we had our uh, November 14th meeting. Got some minutes from it here. Um, is there anything that people want to go over in that? Uh, Michael, I don't know if you've had a chance to read through because I know you weren't there at the time. Uh, but if you no, have I haven't, and I'm sad to see Dave's leaving. <laughs> it's very sad. You're you're not alone there. We uh we talked a lot about it at the uh, at the annual meeting, and uh, I also had had a conversation with, I think the board, or maybe just Al, or maybe Al and Dave. I don't remember now. But I, I was like, this is so bittersweet because Dave's job opportunity is great. Like it's so exciting for him, but then it's just also so sad that he won't be a nom anymore. Uh, what is he going on to? He's he's working with um uh do you know Michael Flynn who used to be on school committee? I'm I don't know him, but I'm familiar. Like I know of him. He was like national teacher of the year right. um for the US at one point, and he started a um uh, he's running a consulting business around that around the world, I think. And um really developing educational videos on teaching um, teaching teachers how to t teach children um, and breaking down learning. And um, Dave's going to be working on that project. Wow. So wow. it's, it's a really good, really good salary and can be at home for most of his days completely. And, and then some, some fun travel. And so, and, and also something that's like, uh, you know, um, good work. That's great. That's so. great for him. Really great. Yeah, he deserves it for sure. Um, one thing I want to touch on from the meeting, uh, from this meeting, uh, was in the high school report. Oh, and there's Ellie. Uh, there was the um, talk of the youth for equity in action uh, event. That was what YEA stood for. I yeah. did not, I could not remember until just now when I actually read it. But uh, that event happened on the 30th, and I was there. Florian was there. Uh, Jordan showed up, or not Jordan, uh, Jeremy showed up recently, and uh, I filmed it, and it came out okay. I sent the video over to Ellie. I was, uh, that was a great event. It went really well. It was hey, good to see you. 
Um, okay. Any other um, stuff that people want to talk about from this meetings minutes? No. Okay. Um, no one has concerns, then I uh, make a motion to approve the minutes from last minute. Second. Okay. Uh, let's vote to approve the minutes from the November 14th meeting. All those in favor say aye or raise your hand. Great. Okay. Motion passes. Let's move on to the next meeting's minutes, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a special meeting uh, over Zoom on November 26th. Uh, this was right before the general meeting. And this was specifically to tackle um, changes to the bylaws for expanding the board and also uh, voting to start the process of having a special election um, so that we can, so that I can run for election since I forgot to, and also <laughs> so that. Uh, we can have an opportunity for people to run for the newly added board seats. Um, and it went pretty smoothly. Uh, Florian had sent out some changes. Uh, they're reflected in these minutes. I just copy pasted them like the, the original part of the bylaws document and the new text. Are, those are all at the bottom, a couple pages of this doc. Um, it really was just that like, you know, we're going from seven directors to nine directors the new two positions are elected but they are also optional so we don't have to have nine we can have as few as seven if we want to um oh and the even odd year thing for terms uh we did away with that so now people's terms just start when they get elected and they go on their schedule from there um so yeah that was the bylaws changes and yeah, and then we decided we were going to do the special election. Uh, Tim and I are on the nominating committee. We have an update on that later. But that's pretty much what happened. Any questions about the special meeting? OK. I make another motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting. Second. All right. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes from the November 26th special meeting. Say aye or raise your hand. Okay, motion passes. We are done with minutes. Let's go back to the schedule here. The agenda rather. Okay, let's review the tasks document, which I have somewhere, here it is. Okay, stuff that recently has stuff that's due. Uh, a new tab for events. It's it's right here. <laughs> Florian <Yeah>. did it. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, we've got the event tab. Uh, again, that YEA event was great. I couldn't make the hot chocolate run or the first look at Holly Street because I was still sick at that point. So, uh, uh, yeah, hot chocolate run sucked. <laughs> oh, oh, it was raining, wasn't it? Yeah. It was raining. Yeah, uh, I don't know when Easley started. Dave was there at five o'clock in the morning. And he, he didn't look that happy, <laughs> but he was in good spirits the next time I met him. Uh, I Jeremy also couldn't make it, and uh, we had the flyers. I tried to hand out. I don't know. I handed maybe out fifty flyers, but it was really like it was raining the whole time, so nobody was really in the spirit to do anything, mm. uh, and. Yeah, it was it was not the funnest hot chocolate run, let's say it like that. And uh, first look at Holly Street, uh, that was that was amazing. Like it's uh, like the, the new building, uh, or the, the updated building is really it, it's beautiful how they did it, uh, how it looks, and there's still some minor things. Uh, it was a big event. Uh, it, I was a little bit sad that I was the only one from the board there. Uh, Cynthia, I met Cynthia for the first time that I really talked to her. <laughs> she, she's amazing. She was very spirited and she carries the spirit of Gnome. <laughs> uh, she also, um, like, she's very eager for outreach and I think she's very active. I think, El, you have more, like, you, you know where, how much better. And she actually, she sent me an email afterwards with some ideas. Uh, and then it's just a question of do we want to 
go to those events or how do we do this? Uh, I don't think, did I say, did I forward the email? I didn't see. No, it. I don't think so. Uh, like there's a, an arts event at Bombix Arts Hub on, on January 20th. Yeah. Uh, that might, I, I, I don't know what it is, so I don't, uh, she thought it might be good that we go there. Uh, and then there is the department, I don't know, I, I, I didn't understand what she meant there, um, but there is the arts extension service at UMass, and she kind of was recommending reaching out to them, but yeah. Okay. Um, the Bombix event is something I'm, oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just gonna say, um, is this part of the the topic for later in the agenda, the past, the future and past events? Uh, yes, that's why. Because okay. yeah. we can discuss it in more detail then if you want. But Al, you can go go ahead with your thing. I was just gonna say, I, I'm I'm gonna be in attendance at that Bombix event. It's a convening of a lot of arts organizations in the area. Um, just just um, it's really a networking and convening event for those for those arts groups to start industry wide conversations locally about among that constituency mm. so yeah i think then we should go as well if we can yeah totally. uh, like if yeah uh okay cool um other stuff let's see um uh, tim and i are going to talk about the uh, election committee stuff um I re realized that I need to edit the board policy document for the new members who are coming on. So I put a task in there for me to do that. Uh, was there anything else? Everything else is either is like ongoing stuff that we need to get to later. Like, yeah, so, the, yeah. the audit setup, I forwarded you guys the email from, uh, from the chamber. There was some good stuff in there. Mm -hmm. It's just a question how we, how we go on with that. Okay. Um, but yeah, everything looking good for the tasks document. Anything that else that people think should be added that we're not thinking of? No, I think there's plenty of stuff on there. Okay, cool. Let's uh, go back. Uh, let's do the director's report. Um, Al, do you have a report typed up? I do. It's very brief. Um, I can share it in chat right here. Okay. Yeah. If it's if you don't uh, feel the need to screen share it, then you certainly don't have to. If it's if it's really short. Um, that's the doc. Um, I've begun the hiring process for the new production manager for Dave's position. Um, I posted it on various um, sites and also in some industry. Um, uh, email list serves. Um, we've got a couple of applicants already. Um, I'm anticipating, you know, uh, the deadline is early January for applicants, um, but that's that's been that's process has been started. Um, we completed moving our financials to a new chart of accounts. You'll see that tonight. The document for the for the budget is um, is based on that. Um, this has been something that Florian and I have been working on all year. Um, and so we've we sort of um, redone the way that accounts work in our in our in our accounting software um, to make it a little bit more streamlined. It's a little bit more broad, um, but perhaps a little bit easier to understand. That's the hope. Um, obviously, we had our annual meeting and crowdsourced screening uh, this past month. Uh, staff worked the hot chocolate run this weekend. Um, I'm in touch via chat and email with staff every day. Um, have been this week and will be next week um, from Spain. And um, there's a bunch of production that's happening next week. And then the end of the month, there's almost nothing going on, which is which um, meaning there's no production going on. There's certainly things going to be going on um, internally at the station. But um, and then we'll have first first night, uh, which is going to be probably a little smaller than it has been in the past couple of years, uh, which makes sense. Um, even from from the, the point that you know we had a pretty big first night production because we were doing an awful lot of streaming um, during the end of the pandemic, so um, that'll wrap up our year. Uh, um, we may be doing some city council meetings from the senior center. Um, one of the new city councilors is in a wheelchair. Um, Jeremy Dubs is in a wheelchair, and he um, the the bathroom at city council chambers is not handicap accessible. 
Uh, so the city council has contacted us and asked if we can produce it live from the senior center. So we're figuring out how we can do that as um, the city tries to renovate that bathroom as quickly as possible to make it handicap accessible. And then lastly, um, our election results, Alexandra Wegman and Thomas Stroud, our new board members for NAM. Um, they've been uh, notified to that fact as have all the candidates who are running for office. So everyone's informed as to who won and lost. That's pretty much it. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see, I have the high school report here to screen share. So let's jump into that unless anybody has any comments or questions about Al's report. All right. Okay, we got the student report up. This looks like the uh, the old one, actually. Oh, this does look like the old one. You're right. It says the yeah. 14th. I like, yeah, I, link, I think I linked the new one in the agenda. I just updated the link. Okay. Um, bah, 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 bah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay, I'm going to close. I have too many tabs open. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the uh, we've begun. The transcript has begun to order uh, fifty five hundred dollars worth of new gear, and that's including uh, fifteen uh, new Manfrotto flute head tripods to replace the tripods for all the uh, cameras used for the transcript. Um, Twenty sixty four gigabyte SD cards, uh, six new LED panel lights, uh, a new drone, the DJI Mini three, a uh, replacement hand grip for one of the Ronins. Uh, two 24 millimeter Canon EF lenses and 10 replacement headphones for the computers. Um, and then an additional $7,100 of gear was purchased by NOM. And that includes uh, seven refurbished SL3 bodies to replace the class cameras for uh, the photography class. Um, but we're approved for a 15, but we're just starting with seven. Um, 15 road lavalier mics, 30 lens caps, uh, 15 mic foams, a battery charger for the drone and eight new light batteries. Um, and on top of that, the Youth for Equity and Action presentation happened this two weeks ago, I think, uh, and the recording went well, has been taped, and been sent out. Nice. It's a lot of, a lot of good equipment. Cool. Oh, yeah. We're, uh, we really are We're standardizing the whole, all the cameras in the class because previously it was a mix of SL3s for the transcript and then some T3s, T4s, and T5s for the photography class, but our goal is to just get that whole fleet to SL3s. Nice. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments on the student report? All right. Special election stuff, the nominating committee. Um, okay, so um, Tim and I reached out to, I reached out to William Arnold, Tim reached out to Thomas Campbell uh, to ask if they would like to run again in the upcoming special election. Both of them were into doing that. So they will definitely be part of the slate of candidates. Um, I realized that I need to write a bio that I can send to, to Al and give, give him a headshot. Uh, so I started in on that this afternoon and it's almost done. So I think like tomorrow, um, and then, yeah, I think that's the, the stuff. Did you, what else did you need from us, Al, besides that information? Yeah, you did, Ed. Yeah, I can't hear you. Yep, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll. That's all I need. I mean, I'm, I'll open up the nominations and send out something to membership mm -hmm. um, this week, and start that process. And we'll we'll hold another election. Cool. Um, yeah. Let's. Uh, so... uh, do we have any any final say on on Tim? Do we want to include him, and or is it because if everyone is in the in the run anyway? Oh yeah, Tim and I did talk about that. Tim, did you come to a a final decision on whether you want to to run or not? Uh, 
Um, well, yeah, that, well, I remember last meeting that Florian talked about um, uh, does it make sense for me to shift over so we could have an extra um, what am I? Um, appointed. Uh, appointed, yes, that's yeah. the word I'm looking for. It's been a long day, man. I've been using big <laughs> words all day. I'm out of big words, man. Uh, an appointed position. Open. So, I mean, do I, I mean, do I need to run or like, is that how that works? You know, like, I, mean, I mean, to move, to move over, do, do I have to run? Is that, a, is that a thing? Yeah. If you would be a, an elected position, you have to run. But the, as if, as all candidates agreed to rerun, it would actually create more of a mess, I would say, you know, like we, we, we don't want to have someone not be elected two times. Yeah, that's I suppose that's true. <laughs> and, and then appoint someone, so, uh, or so it would be good, but it's not, I think, then it, then I kind of, I, I feel you shouldn't. Yeah, unless you, Tim, unless you really want to, I would I, probably I, hold on. I'm so, I'm so confused right now. I mean, if it's necessary, I will. I mean, if it's going it's, it's to hurt more to run than not, then I mean, I no. But if it's necessary for me to do it to open a position, I will. That's it's, what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. well, it's not necessary for you to do it either way, right? Because okay. the two positions that are being added are optional. So you definitely don't need to in any event. But um, but because we have those people deciding to run again, um, they could all get elected to the open positions. And then if you also ran, there would have to be someone who didn't get elected to one of those positions because it's three positions and we'd have four people oh, running for them. Um, and like Florian was saying, that could be just like, you know, it would it would feel really bad if like, uh, uh, what are the other people who had now run twice didn't get elected? But um, okay, that's fine. Yeah, but but if you really want to run, I'm not stopping you. You certainly can. <laughs> the floor is open for you to do it, but you don't need to. You actually never needed to. But it's the but yeah, we we all, we don't. Uh, it's yeah, it's up to you. You know. I, I got it. I got it. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Um. Cool. Well. Uh. Anything else on that topic? I don't. I think we're good there. I think we are on track. It's just a question when the election is official. So that might oh. be something to consider for the first meeting that we yeah. have the first meeting afterwards. Otherwise, we. Well, that's the thing, right? So, Al, it's when you notify membership, there's that 30 days that needs to go by after they've been notified before the election can actually happen, which is another 30 days after that, right? Yeah, so there'll be a 30 day window for people who want to nominate themselves or or someone else for the for the election. And then there'll be a 30 days following that that is the actual election. So it'll be two, it'll be 60 days before we have yep. the new board members. Oh, okay. It's that yes. yeah, okay. So then. so so that also means because my term ends at the end of this calendar year, yeah. I will not be yeah. around for the January meeting, even if I get reelected, right. because that election won't be over right. yet. Correct. Mm -hmm. You'll have to carry on without me for one meeting and possibly forever if I don't get reelected, but hopefully I will. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> then we just have to figure out, the, I don't know what the official procedure is. I think you hold the, the office until replacement is in place. Mm, maybe. I could check the, the bylaws on that. Um, if not, I think it would fall to to the vice president. <laughs> well, it would fall to the vice president. I think after that, it falls to the treasurer. I I should also check that. I don't think sure we have that succession for like in place, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. But someone okay. else may have to run one meeting. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we we figure it out. Um, uh, so yeah, that's just uh, a heads up. That's what's going to be happening. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah, the events thing. Uh, events, past and future. So we talked about this a little bit, but if we want to talk about it in any more detail briefly. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that, like, we had the hot chocolate run, I already mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
than the event at, at Holly Street. Uh, I also want to point out, Dave and Isley did a really great job of, of cleaning up uh, Gnome. <laughs> it, look, it looked fantastic for, for people to come by and look at everything. Um, and it's like, it's, it's beautiful. Like the, the thing was great. Nice. Uh, and yeah. Uh, I just like them. The other thing we talked about is this meeting. Uh, Cynthia mentioned the arts hub meeting. I would put this on the list. Okay. And, and try to find, I, I like, and you seem to know the format. Yeah. Like, uh, how many people would make sense to go there? Is this like an open networking meeting or is it like what's there? The tickets are free to it. You can sign up on Eventbrite. I can, I can get that information and send it out to the board. I, I have a link here. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's a cap on the number of people who can attend, but um, I'm not sure, but but it's it's pretty easy to sign up for it. Oh, it's a, a day of um, the other thing I would a, a day of workshops, panel discussion, and community to be held on Saturday, January 20, uh, 20th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Bombix. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'd also add Arts Night Out to that calendar. Oh yeah, Arts Night Out. Um, which is Arts Night Out. We're going to be doing something during Arts Night Out the entire year, um, the second Friday of the month um, at the 33 Holly Space. Um, and there's always there's always volunteers. Um, volunteers are always great for that. Um, I will definitely be able to do the the one in January, even though I won't technically be on the board at that point. I'll still I'll still represent. Um no, but I can definitely do the arts night out in January. Uh I think I can do the Bombix thing. Uh I would like to to try to get over to that. Um but I also don't want Flor well, I want Florian going to a bunch of these, but I don't want Florian to be the board member that goes to like every single thing because that's too much for for Florian to do. No, um, I do it on the. I, I, I like uh, it, it was a great miss that I was the only uh, there at the uh, at the art center. I think it's great to represent Gnome in this way, mm -hmm. and I think it's a uh, uh, like El knows knows the setting. It's I think it's interesting people to connect. And it's it's important that we are presented there in a good way, uh, so that I, I feel it was a little bit a missed opportunity. But like I go to the things I feel interested in, so I <laughs> don't worry. I I say no if I if I don't like to do stuff, but just that we have enough people at those things. Yeah, I, so I would definitely like to see at least in the um the the like if you want to add yourself in the tasks document under the events thing for. Um, any of the things that are coming up that you think you could make, please do, uh, because we definitely want more board members at them. And yeah, I just hope more people can go to stuff. Ugh, I'm so mad I missed that freaking thing on the 5th. I was still feeling gross, but that does sound really awesome. I wish I had been at that. <laughs> um, I'm not unhappy that I missed the hot chocolate run. That no, sounded miserable. Miserable. <laughs> I think. Oh. And I think, I think my core in terms of the events Think about Gnome when you do stuff. Like I'm sure, Michael, you do certain things with uh, with this cool comedy. Uh, if you if you can bring the part of Gnome there as well and make the connection, and then let us know if there's anything interesting for us that we. I, I think it's 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 finding this way, um, and maybe that's an, that's another side comment. Uh, the hot chocolate run. Uh, the weather was bad, so it was the motivation was also not there. But we had to get better at how do we represent gnome. Like we had the flyers, but other bit other than that, we didn't really think it through how we want to present it. Mm -hmm. And I think we can also get better there. Yeah, and I think these um these uh the, what are they what are they called the Friday events? Um, the outside out. Yeah, I think those are good opportunities to sort of hone that skill. Oh, and this way, uh, thank you, and for making the flyer as well. Uh, that was a last minute thing as well. <laughs> I always feel bad because the school committee is always asking Nam for stuff. So whenever I can share things that are going on, uh, the, the, all the accomplishments, I love love to do that because we're always just bothering Al and everyone, Dave and everyone for things. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, they you all support. The local government so much it's um 
really amazing. It's really amazing. Okay. Uh, next topic, unless anyone has any other event stuff they want to talk about. Um, this was something that Tim was talking to me about. So Tim, if you want to helm this, you can. Um, but uh, Tim had been asking about if there's a way to like change around some of the hours of operation of NOM to maybe make it easier for people who want to do editing. I was thinking a little bit about this. Florian, no. This is, I want to see yeah, Tim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say oh, right. Tim has to speak. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Florian, no. <laughs> well, again, it's always been my thing, man, like not be accessible. And I just think currently the way the hours of operation don't work for people with jobs, basically. Um, I, you know, even like now, I want to bring people down and bring people in and, you know, um, and then and do stuff and, and shoot and, you know, just, you know, and, and sometimes um, the Tuesday, what is it, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday don't work. I don't even get out of work till five and now working Amherst. So by the time I get home, it's like 530, you know what I mean? And to try and go and, and do something. And yeah, I have the stuff yeah. here, like some of the stuff here, but I don't have a place to shoot. Or sometimes you find out that you need a different camera or whatever, or something, you know what I mean? And so, like, you know, um, people, you know, we meet up and, you know, it takes an hour to set something, it takes an hour to set up or something like that. So I'm thinking what I was going to say, I, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, I don't want to be the bad guy. And I just hate the fact that I have to say it or whatever. But I think, you know, if we can get a Saturday, and maybe if, like, I know you need a manager or a production manager there, but like, you know, if it's feasible, if it makes sense to like have two part-time positions instead of a one-time, you know, or, or one, you know, one position or uh, just or a position in a part-time. So maybe we can do Saturday because Saturday really, really most people work Monday through Friday. Um, and like the weekends work best, you know what I mean? Where we can get in and do some things and uh, um, have time to actually like set set stuff up and ask questions. Cause a lot of part of NAM is learning, you know, and, yeah. um, and you know, somebody who's using the equipment regularly and um, doing it. Sometimes there's other people there doing the same thing and you can ask them, but you know, it's like a, the watering hole for media, you know, so. Um, that was just my concern. It's like, because I'm like, you know, I just want to, it's just not accessible at the times that are, that, that you have now. Oh, that we, I don't know how to say this. We, us, y'all, them. Yeah, I mean, um, my, you know, I, I'm open to, oops, sorry. Um, I think we could consider opening Saturdays. You know, we opened Saturdays. We were open Saturdays for about three years. And the reason we stopped doing it is no one showed. And so that's why we quit being open on Saturdays. But um, it's something we could try again. I definitely think um, what we, what, you know, what we say to people often is they can, they can book a Saturday if they want to shoot something and we'll show up and, and, and open up the space for them. But if, you know, if the board wants to have us have regular Saturday hours, that's something we can certainly implement. I, you know, our experience was sometimes we would have busy Saturdays, but for the most part, I'd say 80% of the time, no one showed up. And that's why we stopped that. But uh, again, um, we're open to trying it again, for sure. Uh, well, I what about like, I mean, like a part-time Saturday, like, you know, from certain... You know, certain. I, I okay. I didn't know you can book Saturdays. I didn't. I mean, I didn't know that was a a thing. You're breaking up on me. Oh, oh sorry. I didn't. I didn't know you could book Saturdays. Am I? Am I still breaking up? No, you're good now. Okay. Um. But it's also like um. You know, sometimes like if you want to do things in a day, it takes a while. Like it's more than just you yeah. know I'm gonna do this for four hours or whatever. I'm gonna do you you find out you get in editing and the lights is 
you know, the lighting is off or the sound, you know, is terrible or something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it's worth the conversation. I feel like it's worth the conversation. And I love to hear everybody, you know, everybody else's take. And, you know, and I'm thank you for your take, you know, because I didn't know that people wasn't showing yeah. up and capitalizing the space. I just thought it wasn't this new space because this new space, I mean, it's really hard to, you know, do anything in that yeah. kind of new space. No, the new space isn't really built for shooting. It was the old space. Yeah. Um, it was the old so, space that we did that in. And we, tr we tried something also like, you know, we tried being open. <laughs> I can't remember now. Was that every other Saturday or one Saturday a month? And then we're open every Saturday. We tried a lot of different versions. It's tricky. It's hard to like, you either have to be open Saturdays or, you, or, you, or you're not uh, just because it's too complicated. But, uh, you know, I do think it's a constant struggle, I think, trying to figure out what our hours should be for people. Um, and um, that's why we opened Saturdays when we did. But I, I mean, I think it's worth another try, actually. I think it's I think it makes sense. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I think it's worth looking at and, and, and worth pursuing doing that and seeing and seeing what happens. No. Uh, I would like to point out one thing that I found very interesting about this exchange, which was that it's Saturdays are available on request, but people didn't know that. So my takeaway from this is maybe how do we better communicate with people who might want to do shoots on off hours or on non normal, you know, nine yeah. to five type hours. And how do we yeah. make sure that they are aware that that is an option? Yeah. I think Ed, you answered it a little bit. Like for me, the question was, is there so much other stuff going on in Gnome that you don't have the staffing to keep it open more often? Or is there no demand when you offered it? And I, uh, it sounded a little bit like uh, that you, you, you tried certain things and the demand isn't there. And then the question is, is the demand not there because it's Gnome and Holy Street? Holy Street, or is it was it more in the high school? Because that's something which came up with Dave as well, uh, like the idea to have staffing sometimes at the high school and sometimes at the at Holy Street, um, which gets very complicated that people know, like, uh, oh, I want to go and edit something. Where do I have to go? I don't know. And then they go to the wrong place and think, oh, it's not open. Um, like this is very difficult to communicate in a way that people can reliably go there and and have something. And then obviously it forces sleep at some point. Um, I think. Yeah. It... Go ahead. No, 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 please. I, I, I think like as, as, as the board, the, the, the question I see, do we think this is something we want to foster, like this educational part, uh, and want to make an effort, an effort that this is 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 more activated again, or is it like known there's so many other things? Did it shift to the other things? Like I I, I assume and uh, that the staffing is also a problem. Uh, that there's reasonable hours. Uh, like if with all the programming going on, there's a lot of of stuff like that going on. Um, do we have to shift the resources a little bit and, and, and talk about those things uh, is my question. If... Yeah, I mean, I think a couple of things have happened here. I think one is that um, uh, one at one point we were at four employees and now we're at three employees. And yeah. um, and, and that so so we lost 25 percent of our workforce. Um, and that's basically because our revenues became flat. They stopped increasing. And as long as we wanted to keep you know, paying health insurance and giving people raises uh, that match colas, we couldn't, we can't really keep four people. We're not really a four person organization anymore. And so that was, that's one thing that has made it more difficult. Um, the other thing is, yeah, of course, being in two spaces um, has been tough. I, I personally think it's really important for us to be in the school, having regular hours there and working with students um and and you know we just have to think carefully about our schedule and it is about communicating our schedule too for sure i mean even the fact that we're open tuesday wednesday and friday is kind of an awkward communication um and we do that partially because thursday nights are always you know it's very typically city council meetings and so um, it's just a very natural day for us to to have staff not be 
uh, present during the day as well. Um, the other thing that happened on top of all this is when the pandemic uh, when the pandemic came by, it really shifted the nature of our work a lot. And so we were we started producing a lot more content for other people as opposed to um, really nurturing people coming into our space. And so uh, so that became that became a bit of a habit for us. Yeah. Um, and by that, I mean, you know, there's an expectation that people have when you cover something one year for somebody and then you cover it the next year. They think that you're going to cover it every year from now on forever. And so, and we did that for a couple of years during the pandemic, but, but really what, what I've been in process of doing and we're getting, and I need to do more of is saying, we're going to have to say no to some of that stuff a little bit. If we want to encourage that nurture, that producer base. Um, so, so those are the different directions that we're pulled in. I'm just framing out to kind of like the, not the battlefield, but the map of, of, of where, where we get, where we get pulled in terms of our, our attention um uh, yeah, that, so that, that basically answers the, the question like this is a strategic decision what does what yeah. should no do right and i want to hear from your statement yes like during the pandemic it made sense to produce stuff uh because that was activity and the people didn't come in anyway or you couldn't let the yeah. people in anyway so that's right. that's being staying active uh the question is is this the, the, the like should we pull back and say uh, I don't know. Maybe we have to come up with criteria what what norm should film and what not, or something like that. If, if if you need assistance like that, but then and focus on this on the on the training and offering people um, the the resources again. Um, and then then out of this conversation, you mentioned obviously rightly that there's now three people instead of four people. Um, I, the hard question is what does this mean with two locations? Like, is it feasible to have two locations if... Sorry, you're breaking up on me. That sentence broke up on me, Florian, so I didn't hear you. Is it the question is... The, the question is, is it feasible to maintain two locations? And I'm a big yeah. fan of the high school. I'm also a big fan of, of Forest Street. I, yeah. I don't know to answer this question, but maybe it might not be possible. Uh, another option would be to go back. Um, sorry, my cat is, is walking around here. <laughs> uh, uh, to, to, to see if there's certain things we cover and people have to bring the volunteers or people have to like, I don't, I don't know, like uh, even pushing back uh, towards the city and say, no, we can't cover this, all of those things because we don't have the manpower. I don't know what the question is, but uh, uh, what, what the answer? I mean, I can say this is this is really at the forefront of my mind. It's like all of these, this, the, especially now. I, th I feel like we're at. Um, I mean, I think we're at a turning point for the organization in some ways, and so I think that these are these are the decisions that I'm thinking a lot about. So, um, you know, uh, um, maybe the board wants to be involved in these. Uh, you know, to, to what extent I don't know, but but also these are like. This is a lot of the planning I'm doing when I'm not um, that I have th that I'm sort of working on right now at the end of the year, actually, with some downtime, um, especially as we're getting ready to restaff as well, because when we bring in new staff, it's going to change sort of it'll shift a little bit of the the culture and feel of the organization as well. Um, what about just, you know, uh, like interns? Well, I know you used to have interns like what? Yeah, and, and, interns are and, interns are an interesting thing. They're they're almost as much work as they produce content. Honestly, I mean, interns are terrific, and they can, um, you know, we've been through different phases of interns. Uh, at one point, we had like fifteen interns from yeah. uh, mostly UMass, but some other colleges. But that meant most of our time was spent managing interns, actually. And we ran some programs with those interns. We that's when we had our citizen journalism program. Um, and, and mostly what we did was, was, you know, you have this sort of thing that happens with interns, you have this arc, which means when interns arrive, no one knows how to do anything. And you spend a bunch of time sort of getting them up to speed. And by the time they're up to speed and they're doing good work, they leave. Um, they're there for like, they have like a month of really solid work and then they're gone. And then you start the process all over again. And so it's great. It, it's very like, 
it can be very it can be very good um maybe what we need to do is accept just take on a few interns to do some some smaller stuff but i mean i think that's that is that's an avenue definitely worth exploring for sure yeah, I was going to say, because I, my office at work employs student workers, and yeah, always the first semester, or maybe the first two semesters we have them, it's just, like, making sure they can do the job, and then, yeah. so we're always trying to get freshmen, because it's like, okay, well, this, now we're going to maximize the number of useful years out of you, because the first one isn't going <laughs> to be, but with, but with interns, you don't even have that option, because it's such a shorter time frame. So, so yeah, I mean, I think to your point about bring them on for something really focused or targeted that they might have, like, they hopefully need to be trained on as little as possible. And we, you can just be like, here, here's this easy thing that you probably mostly know how to do already. Go and do it. Um, but yeah, then your program becomes much more specialized, which I don't think is a bad thing, but it requires way more planning for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is definitely a complex topic. I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on it tonight because obviously we have to do a lot of budget stuff, already going to be kind of a longer meeting. Um, but I did definitely want to start this conversation. Uh, I also want to know if Michael or Ellie have any thoughts or input on this. Just put it out there. I was, you know, my first thought when I heard Tim's suggestion was like, oh, that sounds like a great idea. And like I'm like digesting all the history and the dynamics that that Al's suggesting. And and then I was thinking about a you know a membership survey on hours or services. But then like as Al said, like it sort of feels like a turning point and maybe a shift from what was going on during the pandemic, you know, and new like so I don't know what the survey the you know strategically like what would a survey accomplish and like when would be the right time to develop it? And it would seem like after some of that strategic thinking is done or as part of that strategic planning process. Um, and, you know, there's pluses and minuses to doing that kind of outreach. Um, and it may be that it's not actually helpful um, for NAM or it may be that it is. But if some of the focus is turning more to supporting the producer community, I'm wondering you know how we can figure out what that what that de demand might be like what does it look like today versus the past and what do people want and then how how does that align with what we think nom can provide yeah so anyway it's just spinning in my head and i know alan and you all have a much better handle on it so i'm sort of curious to hear more at another point at like what what al thinks the turning point might be and what it looks like and you know what things should fall off and what new things should come on or yeah it's unhelpful but that's that's what i what i'm thinking no i appreciate uh, the thoughts yeah, on I, it oh ellie go ahead i was about to ask you to say something so this is perfect <laughs> no, i definitely think that a good first step um before thinking about like changing the permanent hours would just to um, kind of push that information out there that you can like request to be in this space on Saturday for editing. Um, Cause I, I actually also didn't know that. Um, and then maybe thinking about opening that up permanently on Saturday. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's cool. I think also, uh, yeah, having a strategy to grow the producer base so that, yeah, a lot of this production work is shifted off of NOM and it's they go back into a role where they're mostly just supporting the community's ability to do that themselves, right? Because that's, I mean, I think ultimately the best case scenario is we have a community full of a bunch of producers who are all ecstatic to produce content. And then when they need to, they can go to Dom and have the resources to do it. Um, but yeah, I think uh, having strategy for that and trying to um, get people more informed about how they can book time i think it might be a good um good starting point and just sort of seeing how the organization might want to morph and maybe thinking about some kind of survey stuff uh i think my question towards end would be like you he was saying that uh this is part of your the end of the year beginning of the year where there's a little bit downtime thinking process uh 
do you want to do this on your own or should we set up, uh, I don't know, the executive committee could meet that we, that it's a broader circle, that this is a more, uh, it would be a perfect topic for the workshop as well, but is this something you want to exchange or do you want to think about it and present it to the board? Or should we have the conversation? I, think I, then? I mean, I think this first step is, is I think I could probably present something to the board as a first step. And then maybe we can engage at that point and start like tugging at some of those ideas, I guess. That's my instinct right now today, at least. Okay. But I think it's very, I think communicating that Saturday availability over scheduling is something we can do right away. And I think that, I do think it makes sense to try to be open on Saturdays. I mean, I think Tim, what you're saying about hours not being available, I feel that like, I feel that about like, I couldn't. I couldn't use our own services, you know what I mean? So, so I, th I mean, I think that that's, that's the best case scenario. You know, if I, it, it's, it's frustrating. It, it, it's just like, um, it's frustrating when you do open on a Saturday and then people don't show up, but that's like, maybe, maybe there's more of a showing up we need to push to. So. And I think one, one, one thing which came up in the conversation with Tim as well was in the in the in the current hiring process, does this make a difference which perspective no would look at? Uh, like being responsible for all those productions during uh, throughout the year is something different than than having the community aspect in there and and managing this this open time and and, and being there and and helping people to train on stuff and so on. I feel like it does a, this could be. It's a different interpretation, maybe of the same role, but like you know what I mean. It could be, um, could be slightly different. What's the outcome? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, it's honestly, we we ask a lot for people who apply to work for us, meaning, you know, we want somebody who can who can who can run a multi camera shoot and set it up and have the technical ability to do that but also go out and be able to shoot something single camera artistically with like cinematography, you know, with, with like DP chops and also somebody who's really good with the public and also somebody who could be like a self-starter and organizer. And that's like a pretty, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big pile of things to try to find someone who could do all those things. And it's pretty rare that we find someone who could do all of those things. Um, some of them are more teachable than other things. Um, and so I think I, I look for that. I'm looking for someone who has as much of it as possible or has the raw elements of the rest of it that are, that can be developed. And, and, and of course, and again, some of those are, are maybe more teachable than others and, and have more to do with experience. And so, um, so it's hard to say without understanding the pool of candidates yet, right? We're going to see what the pool of candidates looks like. And that's going to partially determine what we're looking for as well, because we're not, you know, we don't always have the benefit of, of hiring for, of like choosing between four or five people who are perfect for the job, mm. you know? So it's, I think it's more nuanced. Um, but I do think. Is, is there any, any purpose, like this is a wide range of, of, of skills and, and, and knowledge. Uh, is there any, does it make any sense to split this up with two people that you have, I don't know, that it's half time positions and they cover both? Well, so I think there's some things that we need everybody to be able to do, which means like run a government meeting. That's a really basic thing that we do that's essential to our work. And so someone has to be able to be able to technically troubleshoot that technology and also produce that content and be available to work it. And so that's like a baseline for anyone who works with us. So some things are more fundamental. Um, and, and as far as dividing people up, um, yeah, uh, a little bit, but it's a very generalist kind of, you know, it can be a very generalist kind of thing. And it used to be, there used to be a period of time in multimedia <clears throat> where if you worked in the big city, 
you were a specialist, meaning you were an editor or you did lighting or you did audio work or camera work or whatever it was. And if you didn't work in the big city, which is Western Mass, you were a generalist and you were able to do everything. And that's sort of going away a little. So that makes, it's actually made people a little bit harder to find because generalists have been a lot harder to find. Um, so it's been a little bit more challenging for a hire. Um, but yeah, of course, I mean, when we're hiring, when, when we're doing this hire, it's going to be in consideration of the skills we already have on board. Um, uh, so what I would suggest with this conversation, because Al had talked about wanting to present something. Uh, and I think we had also talked about how, like, you know, who the the candidate pool is kind of going to affect some of this mode of thinking. Talking, bring this back up again at, in the January or February meeting, I think is probably the best bet. I, I feel yeah. like we've ex gone about as far as we can go tonight anyway. We sort of like have put all the stuff uh, on the table that we kind of want to think about. And now we sort of need to think about and digest it and figure out what the next steps are going to be. Um, but it was a very good conversation. I appreciate it. Uh, so I would like to move to the next thing, which will be the review of the budget executive session. Uh, I'm going to stop screen sharing real quick. And I am going, oh, do we need to vote to enter executive session? Is that how that works? I can't remember. Yes, you do. Okay. Can I get a motion to enter into the executive session? What is the first part? The budget discussion is not executive. That's only the second part. Oh, I thought the budget, I thought all the budget stuff was executive. No, just the personal uh, uh, increase and stuff like that. Mm. Okay. That's correct. Um, is the thing that, uh, oh, did I link the right thing in the minutes? I listed the fiscal. Summary. I just posted it in chat. Oh, good. <clears throat> okay. I will. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. I did link the right thing. Uh, screen share that and we can discuss it as soon as it finishes loading. Uh, oh, yeah, that's, is that done? That's mostly done. All right, uh, share screen. Uh, desktop. No, Google Chrome, here we go. Shh. Okay, uh, here we go, the financial summary. Florian, do you present on this being the treasurer? Uh, I did not plan to, no. Okay. Like, uh, like oh, I have to uh, say right away, our process was not as smooth as I, I was hoping to. We had a little bit of, of a timing issue. So I'm, uh, I think, Ellie, you are most familiar with that. Like, I, did you get my email today with the questions? I did, I got your email questions. Yeah, like that, with, that's something we should go through, but I think you, like uh based on the comments then as well like if yeah you i can talk about all that stuff and then um right so so this is um what you're seeing here are actuals for 2021 20, 2022 and 2023 um 2023 is not complete there's no december financials inside of this 2023 um actuals here um and then you see the approved budget from 2020 23 um, the difference between the budgeted uh, number and the actual numbers, and then the budget proposal in 2024 um, in the green uh, colored column on the right. <clears throat> um, one question Florian had asked me to talk about is just um, some of the, just to go through the 2023 budget and reflect on um, in particular the difference between the actuals and the budgeted numbers um, and, and the reasons uh, for those. And so I'll talk a little bit about that to start. Um, uh, the first line is you'll see that there's a Comcast fee. This is actually, um, this is because we have a, part of this 
there's an extra payment inside of this 2020 this 2023 budget which should go in 2022 there's an extra budget inside of 2022 that should go in 2021 so the actual 2021 number is a should be is actually about a hundred thousand dollars more um and the 2023 number is about a hundred thousand dollars less in terms of um, what we got in those calendar years um um, and so that's the, that's really the reason for the di discrepancy in that number. We've been very consistent for year over year with our Comcast fees. Um, we're getting right around the number that I'm that I'm asking or that I'm proposing in the budget around four hundred twenty thousand um, so dollars. Some we're sometimes a little bit over that. Um, <clears throat> we're usually a little bit over that. Excuse me. Um, other things that that look a little different, um, and and you know some some things that have happened this year. Because we we've consolidated um, a lot of the a lot of the chart of accounts here, um, there there are some more there are some more general buckets that we're dealing with here. If you if you have curiosity about um, how these break down a little bit more, there's a tab called FY 2024 or FY 24 budget detail. Everyone has access to this document, so you can you can pull this up on your own and take a look inside of those details if you want. Um, <clears throat> Inside of general business, there's about a ten thousand dollar difference in the budget. That's because we didn't pay for the audit this year, and we're still in, in conversation around that. Um, that's the reason you know, why that number is a little bit different. There's about a twenty four thousand dollar difference in personnel. One part of that is going to be the December payroll, but another part of that is um, health insurance. You know, when we budget for health insurance, what we're making an assumption that everyone's going to take health insurance, every staff member. But uh, Isley did not take health insurance. Isley is insured through a different source. Um, but we can't leave it out of the budget because at some point Isley may want to um, jump onto health insurance, may have a um, may have a qualifying event that allows them to jump on insurance. So we want to make sure that that's accounted for inside of our budget. Um, our organizational improvement number, um, that difference is largely because we, we struggled this year again with something we struggled with throughout our history, which is... Um, professional development. Uh, so we set aside a bunch of money for staff to do some um, for some professional development opportunities. And and usually what happens is um, uh, staff struggles to find time to do that professional development. We've been very proactive about this. Um, so, you know, we've I've sat down with staff and found classes for them to take and 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 gone through um, all sorts of different links and opportunities and and and, and and it's just very difficult to uh, to get that money spent. I know that sounds a little weird, but that's really historically has been the case. Um, our production money, we oh, our production money, we overspent. Um, one of the big reasons we overspent our production money is we changed the way we accounted for um, capital acquisitions. So in other words, there's a number that we determine we use to determine what it, when something is a capital purchase and when something is inside of our operating budget. That number changed this year. And so because that number changed, things that were previously inside of our capital budget now became part of our operating budget. We knew this was going to happen, uh, not to what extent. And that's why you see the overrun of the budget there uh, on that number. Um, we, we're going to raise, increase that value in the next uh, year for accounting. And so we should see some of that move back onto the capital side from the operating side, which is why you, you see in my budget, I'm not really, I'm not asking for a tremendous amount of more money. Um, past that promotions and programs, there's about $7,800 that we hadn't spent in that. Um, this is spread out over a couple of different items. Um, one is, uh, cinema Northampton is part of this budget. So this, this programs and this promotions and programs is all the advertising we do, but it's also means something like cinema, cinema Northampton is inside of advertising. Something like crowdsource cinema is inside of advertising. Um, anything that is like sort of an event that we do out in the public, is it's event marketing. In other words, we're raising our profile in the community by running these sort of programs. And they're they're community programs and they they do a lot of other things, but they're inside of essentially our marketing budget. Um, one of those is Cinema Northampton. Um, this is our screening, outdoor screenings, um, that is a, it's a cooperative venture with the Arts Council and Forbes Library. Um, just as an example, there's about $1,500 of that that wasn't spent because we didn't have to pay for films this year. The library took on paying for films. In the past, we've always paid for those films. Um, we were, we did a little bit less Facebook advertising. So there's a couple thousand dollars in here that uh, Facebook advertising that we didn't spend. 
Um, and there's also a chunk of money in here to, to run members nights. So that is to run events, um, you know, you know, prior to the pandemic, we were, we would occasionally run events for members, um, to try to bring the community together, producers together so that they could meet each other. And hopefully we could encourage people to make connections among themselves. There's a couple thousand dollars in budget to fund things like pizza or renting out spaces or paying for, um, you know, a film screening, right? So that money was also not spent because we didn't run any members nights this year. Um, facility and utilities is a big chunk of money um, that was not spent. The majority of this money wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't spent because it was in rent and in common area expenses inside of 33 Holly Street. So um, if you may recall last year's budget discussion, we put this money inside because at the time that we approved the budget last year, we weren't sure exactly how um, rent was gonna be handled um, regarding the arts in relationship to the arts trust or common area expenses. So there's a, there's a big chunk of money here because um, we didn't end up paying any rent and common area expenses were very low. Uh, so, um, that accounts for most of the money inside of facility and utilities. Some of the bill increases were not as much as we thought they would be, um, as well. Um, so that, that accounts for a little bit of that money as well. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, and then you see the 2024 numbers. I mean, basically when I'm making my 2024 numbers, um, I made the budget prior to the re- defining of chart of accounts. Um, and the way I generally approach uh, budgeting is I take a look at um, the last three years on, on typical averages. I, I usually try to um, budget high, um, budget more money inside of an expense and less money on the income side. And so I err on, I err on the sense of low on income and high on expense on all of these um, because I don't like to be surprised about it. So, um, that's what I'm doing inside of, so there are, there are smaller items like electric bills or satellite bills, et cetera. Um, you know, I'll take a bill and I'll add 10% to it because I'm expecting an increase in the bill over the course of the next year and then stretch that over out over the year. And those sort of sum up to these different categories. Um, if it's helpful, general business expenses are things like legal accounting, um, you know, registration fees we pay for the state, um, personnel as payroll, as well as workman's comp insurance, as well as um, uh, benefits, all the benefits payments we give to employees are inside of personnel. Organizational improvement is um, it's professional development. It's also professional memberships in different organizations. It's also travel and conference budgets. Um, it's also director's discretionary money. Um, production is supplies, so anything related to producing content is inside of there. So batteries and um, cables and adapters and um, anything like that is inside of our production budget. Promotions and programs I talked about already, and facility and utilities is our bills. So um, you know our electric bill, our internet bill, um, any sort of utility we face inside of there. Our furniture budget is inside of there as well. Uh, so that's that's essentially how I arrived at these budget numbers. I'll talk about the personnel um, number when we go to executive session and recommendations I have in that. Um, all my recommendations are cooked inside of that budget already. Um, in fact, that number is going to be a little high because of Dave leaving. <laughs> Excuse me. Um. Questions on any items inside of the budget proposal? Uh, some comments from my side. Uh, thank you, El, for going through those in the details. Uh, I, I think uh, like there was a lot of going on in the finance uh, side, like the transfer from the desktop uh, QuickBooks to the online QuickBooks, uh, yeah. which proved to be a little bit more complicated than anticipated. Uh, and this uh, this pushed us a little bit backwards. And I think uh, the new structure of the um, chart of accounts uh, will be very helpful to get a little bit more overview and a clearer view. Again, what El already mentioned, uh, there is some other sheets in this document you're currently viewing. If you're interested in the new charts of accounts, uh, the structure and the details under it, there's a, there's a, a tab called new charts of accounts. Um, uh, which hopefully clarifies a few of the of the underlying things. 
uh, but we uh, I think that was a was a helpful move just to have those buckets a little bit clearer and uh, uh, make it easier in terms of what are the the, the overruns uh, on budget uh, so L knows in the in the buckets uh, he can be a little bit has more leeway and and under it uh, yeah it, it's a little bit clearer if you're if you if you're interested in looking at it. Um, being self-critical, I wish we had a little bit more time of going back and forth. This was uh, a victim of this year's process a little bit. Um, I think in terms of documentation, uh, we still have to update this. Uh, as as Elle said, the 2023 numbers only include the actuals uh, until now, uh, which we should we should basically update this number with uh, with the full actuals. So we have documented it properly for the future uh, when we do comparison, because at the moment it's like, uh, yeah, we're not comparing apples with apples necessarily. Um, based on the on the budget, uh, I'll explain it anyway. Like I don't see any any, any problems there. Uh, I like I fully support uh, what El proposed there, uh, and then we obviously have to have the conversation about personnel. Uh, uh, but it's uh, a little bit uh, a different thing. Uh, yeah, I think that's for, that. That's the ad additional comments from my side. Uh, just the task for us, and I would propose that the task is we update the numbers and the, the comments on what are the details and where they're coming from that we documented properly and 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 put this all in writing. Just that we have a uh, if we look back uh, last year, uh, next year, that we know what was happening and that we can we have a good reference for that. Okay, anybody else have any comments? Um, are there any other tabs that I should flip to that we that we should be looking at? Uh, the other tabs would be full year 24 if you want to look into details, but basically the idea of, uh, of this generalized tab is that you don't have to do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that we don't have this discussion about certain line items, which, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, Right, maybe in this way, like this goes a little bit back to the um, uh, to the conversation we had about uh, the additional opening times, uh, and I don't see. And again, I think it's an answer this way. Do we feel that, that the budget reflects the strategic goals we feel has known? And I think it's too early to decide it. Like operational wise, the budget looks good uh, on my end, uh, but that's just to keep in mind um that we are critical with ourselves as well uh is there anything we feel needs to be changed and has to be communicated throughout the budget that makes sense <laughs> all right well, let's move on to the next thing then, because <laughs> we seem good with it. I mean, uh, what are we? Ta are we now? Is it now time for executive session, or are we talking about something else before that? I think if there's no questions about the items here, I think then it's time for the executive session. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna stop stop screen sharing, and I'm gonna pause the recording. Oh, let's pause the recording. Or I think technically, the the move to motion. Uh, to, yeah, we need to. Yeah, I should do that recording. before I pause the recording. So, uh, can I get a motion to enter executive session? I make a motion to enter executive session. <laughs> Second. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of entering executive session, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Cool. All right. Let's pause the recording now. Yeah, that we recorded. Okay, we're back. We're back from executive session officially now. Uh, we voted on the, or we, we, we discussed have, the budget. We have uh, to vote now. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, this is just the vote that we had in private, right? It's just the same thing. Oh, Al's back. He got my message. I think we have to to vote now in public that it's. Yeah, we voted in private and then we realized we we're supposed to vote in public. <laughs>
Uh, okay, then I'm, I make a motion to approve the budget. We're including the approved uh, raises by L. I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor, say aye or raise your hand. Okay. Um, so Al, our big thing about this was um, we want uh, the the new hire that's coming on to really be uh, the, the person you're searching for to really be someone who could do more community outreach because we as a board are just thinking like that's the main thing that we've got to move towards uh, as an org. So that's, the, that's your mandate for, <laughs> for who you're fi finding. Um, but also we would like to try to work towards having uh getting the staff back up to four people but having that fourth person maybe just be a part-time position so trying to work towards that for the future and you know we'll be continuing on that uh checking in with that over over the year right okay uh, and what was the other thing oh just um uh and not to say and we're not like this, this is not to say that it, that it's your fault or anything, but we did feel like the fact that you started the hiring process without uh, consulting us, we were just like hoping there could be a little more communication on that front going forward because we sure. were like, yeah, just, you know, like it's, we, we'd like to be more, more in the loop on a, a decision of that magnitude. Like we knew you were going to hire because obviously we knew Dave was leaving and we knew you were going to be posting the position, but we just, to find out after the position was already posted that it was up, we would have liked a little more input on that. Um, okay. But, uh, oh gosh, am I missing anything? I tried to bullet point everything before we brought you back, but was that all the stuff? What you're, what you're missing is, uh, as always, thank you for a great year. Oh. Of course, yes. and like I, we, we, it, like this also came up in, in in terms of the raises. Thank you for your proposals, and we hope that you have the, you feel also that you have the connection with us to ask for what you what is needed, and that we support you in this way, and that it goes both ways. And I, I can speak for the conversation. We all are very thankful for what you're doing, and we are happy that Isli is uh, is on board in this way and. Uh, uh you you're very happy with the work which is happening and that's, that's great to hear and yeah thank you thank you yeah, thank we you do we do really deeply appreciate you and the work that you do thanks appreciate it i appreciate that yeah you're you're really exceptional so <laughs> thank you but uh all right so oh, I, Al, you're a swell guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving you those shoes, Tim. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate I appreciate all that and um, your support of the budget and me and the staff and all that. So thank you and your kind words. Um. So uh, Michael needs to attend to his children. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, so we would like to to wrap up the meeting unless there's anything else. Then I move a motion to adjourn the meeting. I think we need one. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm sorry, who seconded that? I just need to. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, all those in favor of adjourning the last meeting of 2023 for the Northampton Open Media Board of Directors, raise your hand or say aye. I will... Uh, Maybe not see you at the next one, folks, but I'll be back hopefully soon. <laughs> happy a, holidays. Have a yeah, great happy year. holidays. And everyone, everyone. Thank you so happy much. New Year. Happy holidays. Yeah, have a good time, happy man. Year. Have a good time, Al, man. Yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy I will. Spain. I will. I will. Cheers. Have a good night. All right. <laughs> Bye. Take care, y'all. Bye. Bye.